as a business owner or someone who's who's wanting to start a business of course we all know that one of the most powerful ways to get what you have in front of the the people who need what you have is to create valuable and effective content whether that's on a blog post a website social media youtube videos coming up with the ideas for that content can be challenging yeah so i know that i've related to this in the past but when you have to sit down and come up with the ideas for creating content do you end up feeling paralyzed or do you feel frozen feeling overwhelmed feeling stuck blank do you feel pressured so those kind of feelings another another yeah. option i know that i've had in the past as well is mm -hmm. trying to come up with ideas and then thinking well somebody else has already said that nobody's really going to listen to me you know, those kind of right yeah, and and i don't have anything new or i don't know how to say it and that kind of thing or what are people going to think mm -hmm. you know if i talk about this particular topic so today we want to give you three keys to coming up with ideas for content that will reach the audience you are wanting to reach. So this is not just any old content. This is content that is going to actually have the impact and the effect that you want in order to let your audience know what you have to help. I think by way of launching into this, it's maybe starting with recognizing those states that we're in as we're sitting down to create the content. What What's happening to us? Well, physiologically yes yeah. so the first thing i want to say is that as we try and come up with ideas as we try and strategize or we try to be creative as we want to communicate effectively all of those higher levels of thinking we need the prefrontal cortex of our brain in order to be able to think that way so uh, that's the cognitive thinking part of the brain so as we try to think what what ideas can i come up with or you know what's my competition coming up with and how can i come up with something different all of that way of thinking mm -hmm. is with the prefrontal cortex now the problem is that when we're feeling any negative emotion so we are sitting down with thinking can't think of anything to say or nobody wants to hear from me or i don't know what to say it's overwhelming how do i even start all of those negative thoughts as they're creating the negative feelings the stress chemicals in our system including adrenaline and cortisol are taking the part of our brain offline that we need in order to be able to think that way and come up with those ideas. Also, if you think about doing content, you're feeling, oh, I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel I've any, never, I've any, never kind of, that. <laughs> any kind of resistance to doing it? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have enough time to do it, pressure, all of that. So what you're essentially doing when you're sitting down to try and come up with ideas for content while you are in a negative state you are literally not able to access the part of your brain in order to come up with those ideas. The second part of this is I'm going to give you practical ideas for coming up with content. And then we've got a third part. So this first part is doing whatever it takes to get into a state of feeling good before you start trying to come up with content, because as you bring the stress chemicals down in your system, and your brain starts producing feel good chemicals, that allows blood back to the part of your brain you need in order to think clearly and come up with ideas and be creative and think strategically and so on. So in the first instance, you need to bring down the stress chemicals, do whatever it takes. So whether that's playing with your pet or playing a game or going for a walk or doing some other physical exercise or thinking about things you enjoy and love. What's going on here is that we are essentially in one of those phases of fight, flight or freeze when we think about creating content and we're feeling those negative emotions, we're someplace on that continuum of fight, flight, or freeze. So we're actually creating that struggle, that fight, or that running away, or that shutting down inside of us. And in order to change that, we need to come up with some other kind of behavior that is creating a different neurochemical feeling in the body exactly so that's part one mm -hmm. part two is rather than just you know most people sit down and think right now i've got to come up with content <laughs> right so so it's that kind of sitting down and trying to do it whereas the thing to do is without thinking about it while you are doing other things without thinking about the content itself while you're doing other things making a coffee 
having a shower, going for a walk, rather than thinking what content am I going to come up with or that I've got this audience I need to reach, think of just one person that you know you could help. And that doesn't have to be a specific, it it can be a specific Mm. person, but it doesn't have to be. It just needs to be someone out there that you know you can help. So think of that one person, what is one thing they need to know that you know that they don't know yet? And then the third thing is, How are they going to feel when they know that? So are they going to feel hopeful? Are they going to get an idea they never had before? Are they going to see something differently to the way they saw it before? Boiling it down to one person, one thing they need to know, and how are they going to feel when they know that thing? That's going to, number one, make it far simpler to come up with content and number two is going to change your chemical state which will change the way you're thinking so that's that piece now once you've got that and you, remember you're not sitting down to do this you're not sitting in front of a computer or your phone to do this you're doing other things and allowing your brain to wander because that's what will also keep the stress chemicals down it'll allow your creativity to come to the front once you've done that now imagine you're talking to that person don't worry about what you're going to write or what you're going to record or anything like that just imagine you've got that person in front of you and explain this one thing to them in your mind. Imagine you're just explaining it to them. So the equivalent for us would be what we gave you as the first part of this video, which is when you're feeling a negative emotion, the stress chemicals in your system cause blood to drain from the prefrontal cortex of your brain, which is where we do our cognitive thinking. So when you're feeling any negative emotion, you literally can't think straight. So that would be the equivalent. So there'll be something for your topic that you can explain to someone who doesn't know it yet. And because you're having a conversation in your head, you're using a different part of your brain to when you have to sit down and write something or record something. So that's what makes the difference. Now, once you've done that, then you can make a note of the things that you've explained to this person in your mind and then get excited about how they're going to feel before you actually then sit down and write the content. So that'll get you into a completely different state and you'll come up with ideas you would never have come up with before because you're thinking of the end result for the person you're trying to reach. I think is really critical. And I think the critical point here is recognizing that if we're experiencing those negative states, frozen, scared, I don't want to do this, confused, feeling procrastination, feeling angry, all of those kind of things are definitely going to have an impact on your ability to even come up with ideas in the first place. Yeah. Now that's the, so the first part, prefrontal cortex, you need that online. Second part was the practical way of doing it. And then the third part is, so one person may feel I don't know what to say. Another person may feel overwhelmed. I've got too much to say and I don't know where to start. Another person may be worried about what are people going to think. Other person may be thinking, well, you know, what have I got to say that, you know, somebody else hasn't already said. So there's all different reactions and responses to the expectation you have of yourself to put or, or the thing you know you need to create content for your, your for, audience. Yeah. Right. So what is the difference between each of those people? And the way you respond is the unconscious references that form your self-image and worldview. So each person is going to have a different and a unique self-image and worldview. This is unconscious. For example, one person, when they were a child, they had trouble with homework. So they had to, they either didn't understand it or they were always getting into trouble for not doing homework or they were living in a very stressful home. So when they tried to do homework, there was a lot of stress involved. That person may, depending on what other references they have, they may, when they think of creating content, their brain may be referring to those experiences in childhood that now have formed part of their self-image, part of who they are, and then triggering the same stress chemicals that create stress, that create fear, that create confusion. I don't know what to do. But it's not about creating the content. It's about those childhood references. And they're creating the same feeling now because it is unconscious. So we're not aware that this is what's happening. We think it's about now. So the conscious mind goes, oh, it's because I don't know what to create or because what are people going to think and so on. So that part of the situation is from unconscious references. And we actually have a free masterclass 
that goes into details on that. So you can register for that and you can access the free masterclass, which will go into details on how those references are created and most importantly, how they can be changed. Right. It's just fascinating to me as I engaged in, in doing this process, going back and discovering, uncovering, you know, what those references were in my past, in my childhood that are running in the background. We're not doing this consciously. The subconscious mind is referring back to what we experienced and what we felt in childhood in order to help us to know how to be reacting in the situation. The situation being, I've got to create content right now. And in the background, my reaction is being formed by what I experienced in childhood. And I'm not even aware of that. It, there's not even any control of that going on. But the empowering part of this is that we can actually go back, discover those references, make those changes, which has an automatic impact on how we're reacting in the moment to the same situation. Absolutely, spot on. I gave you one practical tip, number two in this video, and getting ideas for content, I have a lot more. So if you would like more of those practical tips, let us know in the comments of this video and we'll do another video on those. Yeah, and, and also feel free to ask any questions that you might have in the comments below. We're monitoring those kind of things. We'll, we'll be more than happy to answer those questions in the comments. Very good. So we hope to see you in that masterclass. All right, we will see you next time. Bye-bye now. Bye for now.